let me show you the amazing tool in Affinity Photo to organize your resources. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? My name is Olivio. I'm a professional designer. Let's get started. We all know the problem. We have a lot of beautiful files that we're using in our art project. They are all different layers and they might be all over our hard drive, but we need to archive the project or to send it to a friend or colleague to work on our affinity photo file. So where are they and how do we put all of them into a simple folder? Well, it's actually a tool inside of affinity photo that does this, the resource manager. But before we can delve into this, you need to understand how affinity photo handles the files in these layers. Also, if you care about resource management, you probably also want to watch my video about the asset manager, which is linked below this video. So let's go over here to files and new and you can of course decide the resolution of your canvas but when you look over here it says image placement policy and you can choose here between linked and embedded. Now the good news is you can also choose this later on on a file to file basis. Let me show you how that works. Let's click here on cancel and then we go here to file place and right below place it says placement policy so each time you place something inside of your affinity photo file you can decide if it's going to be embedded or linked but what does that even mean at this point i want to thank all of my patreon supporters and youtube members that make these videos possible thank you very much embedded means that the document is imported into your canvas and saved with the file this might sound easy, but it makes the file rather big afterwards. And also the downside is this is now part of the document. So if you change the file outside, it's not going to update inside of your affinity photo file. Now, of course, if it's linked, it's quite the opposite. The affinity photo file stays small because it's just a link and on top of that, when you change the outside file, let's say it's a logo, let's say it's your watermark, it will update inside of every affinity photo file that you're using with that because it is always looking what is the status of that file. So now that we've understood the difference between embedded and linked, let's check out our resource manager. So we go to view and then resource manager and get this beautiful window here. First of all, we have here our files with the file names. And also this gives us a bit of information what is going on here. But we have also the status and this is really beautiful. Right now, everything says OK. But if the outside file that is linked has been modified, it will notify you here. And if it's missing, you're going to be notified too. Let's check this out real quick. So. We have one of them linked, which is this one with the flowers. So I move this into another folder and immediately it tells me the status is missing. So you can see this is actually live and I even get a pop up over here. I can move this back into the original folder and now the status is okay. Now here's another one that it says page. What is that about? What kind of page? You might think this is the amount of pages you have inside of a placed PDF, but that is not the case. What page means is, for example, if you're working on a publisher file for Affinity Publisher, it has multiple pages and this will tell you on which pages this specific image is used. So it might be on 10 different pages and you know exactly where that is. You can even click here to locate that inside of the document. Next, we have the placement policy. We know that this is a linked file and the other ones are all embedded. The cool thing right here is I can change this in our resource manager. For example, for this file here with the portrait, I can click here. I can say make linked and now it is linked because right now the resource manager knows where that file is because I dragged it in from there. If it doesn't know where that is, a pop up will ask you to search for that file and then you can create it as linked. So that is as easy as that is or you can click on embedded and now it is embedded again. 
The next one here is of course the file size and you can see this is very important how big that file is because when you need a smaller affinity photo file you can here eliminate the biggest files by making them link so that's a really really useful way to organize your file the next one says dpi and that might be confusing especially to dpi enthusiasts well look at this if I change the size in here, this is changing the number of the DPI. Why is this? Because this has still the original file resolution. So if it is smaller, the DPI is higher. And if it is bigger, the DPI is lower. This happens until I rasterize that layer to that specific size inside of my canvas. And here, lastly, it says type. It's also very important because you can see mostly we're using JPEGs here. You can also place PDFs, but also affinity photo files. So actually, this file here is not a JPEG. It's an affinity photo file. And when I double click on that, you can see it opens up in our own affinity photo file where I can have all of the layers and effects and adjustments and live filters that I want to have as in any kind of other affinity photo file. It's like a smart layer in a sense. So that is very beautiful. Now, here is the most important part for us. We can select all of this. So I click on the upper one, hold shift, click on the lowest one. So everything is now blue and I can say collect. Now I can make here a new folder. Let's call it collect. And then I will collect everything here. Let's go to our source folder. We still have the files here as they are originally, but we also have a copy in here of the files we are actually using in our collect folder. So this makes it very easy to afterwards gather all of your files into one folder. Now here's a caveat of this technique that you should be aware of. If I write a text, and I have a specific font with that. Let's go with this one. If we now go back to our resource manager, you can see that the font type is not part of our resources. And this means if you want to send this to a colleague or if you want to archive your project, you have to separately save the font type file into the project folder. And usually if you download a font, it comes as a zip file like this with the font files inside of that. So keep that and then simply move that zip over into your collection or unpack it and only move the font over into your collection. This is very important, especially if you work with people on other computers, because they are not going to have this specific font installed on their device. And of course, the next tutorial is just a click away. So let's get this started.